pray this works because it's been a lot of work and I've never made a hood before. Let's get going. Hey guys, what we got here is now we've got our carbon and our peel ply and our flow media. And essentially what all these do is, like I mentioned, the peel ply keeps everything from sticking to the carbon. I did put spray of adhesive on there. And all that does is just keeps things kind of where they need to be. Um, there is some wrinkles in it, but they'll come out. Uh, next thing up that we need to do is we need to have our... Um, resin flow throughout the part so i made this don't laugh so you can buy spiral tubing but it's expensive and i'm cheap so i made this and i just took a piece of hard tubing and split it with a knife all the way around and i put a vacuum tee on it and what we're going to do is we're going to secure this here across the part something like that and then we'll have our line come out and essentially what that'll do is we're gonna have a single vacuum line in on that end that's going to create a vacuum maybe i'll make another thing like this that'll create a vacuum on that end. And we'll have this clamp to this end and when we open it, the resin will go in and it'll flow throughout here. And life is good, we hope. We've got the bag on there. I did run it for a second there and fix a few small leaks. So I will traditionally use just like a clamp and go around. I've never done a mold this big, but uh, something I want to touch on real quick is you could do everything perfect up to this point. You can have a perfect mold, lay the carbon perfect, have perfect prep. It takes one pinhole. What happens is if it leaks air in there, it pulls it in through the vacuum and then it'll go all the way into your epoxy. And it'll ruin everything. Everything up until now that you worked for will be gone. So I'm gonna show you what you're listening for because I do know I have a couple here. So I'm gonna turn on this vacuum pump. And what we're looking for is about 25 to 30 inches of vacuum. I guess it's time to finally, after three weeks of working on this, put some resin in here and see if we can make the C8 Corvette hood. Okay guys, it's time to get going on the structural or inner or lower part of the mold. Um, I've pretty much prepped the whole thing. I got a few things I got to finish up yet, um, but I have concerns like usual. So 
we could vacuum bag this, but to lay it in one piece of carbon, I think is going to be very difficult. And the reason being carbon like fiberglass will wrap, but it pulls apart. So we're going to have to lay this in several pieces, which sucks because I'm not good at getting the strands to line up or the fibers to line up. I can get it pretty close. The good news is this is on the inside of the head. Nobody's going to see this. So, and it actually, with the epoxy, it does camouflage pretty good. Um, so as mentioned before, where the latch support goes, and the two hinges, we're going to put a couple layers of Kevlar there. Um, we're also going to probably put an extra couple layers of carbon there as well, just to have a couple different um, types of strength. Um, the vacuum bagging won't be bad, but I think I'm going to do a wet layup. I was thinking about doing an infusion, but for simplicity reasons, I think we're going to do a wet layup. Yeah, I think we're going to do a wet layup. So what that means is we're going to uh, essentially we'll put down some resin and then we'll put the carbon on top of it. And then we will have a release ply and then a Essentially, it's like a foam, but it, uh, it's a breather cloth. It absorbs resin we're not using. And then we'll still have a vacuum on that end of it. I'm really hesitant about this because I don't have a lot of extra carbon. So we have one shot at this. So I think the best way to do it is we are going to lay this piece back here on the hinges is one piece of carbon. And then it'll go up 90 over here. And then I think the base will be a piece and then up here will be a piece. It's tricky. We definitely can't do it in one. I'm almost positive we can't do it in two pieces. It might have to be three. So with that said, I'm gonna finish prepping this mold. Yeah, let's get it. Right, guys where you're getting close here to finishing this hood again i've never made a hood before i'm very nervous on how this is going to turn out we did the carbon infusion yesterday on the top half i'm just letting it cure uh, the epoxy i use is 36 hour cure uh, at 90 percent hardness 25 degrees celsius 25 to 27 degrees celsius um, that said it's like 17 in here and it's been 12 hours so we're going to let it sit and uh cure a little harder before we take it out otherwise it might deform on us the structure side of the hood is a little bit more complicated actually it's quite a bit more complicated it's probably one of the more complicated pieces i've ever done um, i'm going to take you guys for a walk around on things that i have that are concerns um, right now i've got the mold release agent and the pva down um, we're going to do a wet layup on it uh, essentially which means we're going to put the carbon in then we're going to put the epoxy on top and then we'll put the bag on top of it the reason being it's a complicated piece and I have concerns on how I'm going to get the uh, infusion to work. People would know how, I don't know how, so I'm not going to pretend I do. I'm just going to uh, do a wet layup on it, which there's nothing wrong with. Wet layup works great. I've done lots with great results. You just use a little more epoxy and it's not truly as strong, I guess. Uh, I don't know.
you haven't worked with Kevlar, it's its own animal. It's much, much more rigid. It's much stronger. Well, I mean, they make bulletproof vests out of it. It doesn't cut where the shit, even with serrated scissors. It's uh, difficult. However, it is extremely strong. So where we put the nut certs in for the hinges and the latch, it's gonna add a lot more structural integrity. So we're gonna get the Kevlar put in here like this. And then the latch is two. We're gonna do two layers of Kevlar. Um, I pre-cut these. So two layers, this is layer one, obviously. You'd be amazed how much stronger this is than carbon fiber. Again, the bulletproof vests are made out of it, so maybe you're not too amazed. And it is difficult to work with. It doesn't want to cooperate. It doesn't want to form. It absorbs the epoxy okay, though. And then we're still gonna have the carbon fiber layers on there, so this would be very strong. We're also gonna put two layers of carbon, two layers of carbon in the hood adjusters. These don't have to be super strong. The carbon fiber is probably fine, but I like to over-engineer and build things, so why not, right? Actually, the Kevlar is relatively cheap. It's cheaper than the carbon fiber, especially when you've had it sitting around forever. It's like that. Okay guys, so we got it out of the mold. It looks pretty good. Like I'd give it a seven, maybe a six and a half out of 10. Definitely some areas to touch up. I just poured water on it there to uh, start loosening up the PVA. So it wipes off easier. Uh, I'm gonna take a break here, go for lunch and I'll come back and uh, we'll wipe this all off. Um, yeah, overall, you know, I did end up putting an extra piece of Kevlar in the hood latch and either corner of the hinges. Um, just we're gonna start trimming out the structure piece and the top piece and then we're going to use some body panel adhesive we'll put them together we'll clamp them together and uh, let them sit for the night tomorrow we're going to come back and tomorrow when we come back we're going to start touching things up um, for example this lower piece uh, just because of the different transitions and everything and i've never done a piece this complicated um, there is some air pockets in it not the end of the world this is the first of ones i've done so i didn't expect a 10 out of 10. Um, Total hours into this thing, man, like, I don't even know, like we're in hundreds of hours right now with the mold construction and the structure of the lower part and the upper part. Um, but you know what? It's for the right person. Don's going to love this. I know he will. Um, we will end up, I did put that clear uh, gel coat on there you guys saw that protects it from UV rays. And the reason I use that and not clear coat is road debris. Um, the gel coat, obviously, being a marine grade gel coat, is much, much, much stronger than a clear coat, and it protects from UV ray. However, we're still going to spray a clear coat on there just to make sure the epoxy doesn't turn yellow over time. We want the hood to last as long as possible. So, that said, uh, like I said, I'm going to take lunch. I've got some KD on the go inside. There were some pork chops I'm pretty amped about. And then I'm going to come out and we're going to uh, start cleaning off this PVA and trimming the exterior pieces, you know, where all the extra hangover is. And then we'll do the upper part, we'll trim it. And I'm just gonna time lapse this all because I know you guys are interested in actually watching it in slow-mo, a regular time or full time, whatever. 
And then we're going to body panel adhesive it together. Why body panel adhesive? Because it's good for 60,000 PSI of strength. Um, it's, so from where I'm from, we have insurance called SGI, Saskatchewan Government Insurance. It is SGI accredited to use body panel adhesive. So it is very, very, very strong. So we're going to use that. We're not going to use anything else because we want the best for Dawn. Let's go. You guys, we are getting close. So I just ran an 80 grit over the edge there just to kind of clean everything up and also scuff the surface to make sure we have a good bite and bond for our body panel adhesive. We're gonna be using the two-part body panel adhesive. Uh, it's good for 6,900 PSI. Uh, should be more than enough. We don't need a lot of strength. So uh, essentially what we're doing is trying to keep them together and sealed. So I'm gonna start, I'll put a pretty good, I'm not gonna do a lot because it is very strong, but a generous amount because there is some high and low spots. And then it'll kind of fill it in. Then we're going to clamp it down. We'll do the inner structure and the outer structure. And uh, we should be cruising. I did the test fit you saw on the time lapse there. Everything fit perfect. I'm amped. It, you know, it's cool. You work on something for over a month, every day, 10 hours a day, eight hours a day. Um, there might've been some naps in there. You just never know. And it's cool to see it finally come together. I hope it works out in the end. I mean, there's still things that could go wrong. I could go to put the nut certs in the hinges and they could break and that's the end. But I don't think it will. It's very strong. Um, we have five layers of 3K, uh, oh sorry. We have three layers of 3K twill and then we have two layers of 12K uh, and then we do have in the corners the extra layers of Kevlar. So I think it should be more than strong enough. We're gonna hit it with the 6,900 P 6, PSI. Um, epoxy and we should be cruising. I'm going to clamp it. I'm going to leave it for the night. I'm going to come back tomorrow morning and we're going to see how things are looking. Okay guys, we're getting close. I know I've said that a thousand times, but there's a lot of steps involved. This is the scary part. I wouldn't say it's what separates the boys from the men, but it definitely puts your nerves on edge. This is the final shaping. So we're gonna use the orbital sander and go around, clean everything up, clean up any uh, rough edges, bad edges, stuff like that. This is the part that is could make or break things. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, it's another day today. As I mentioned yesterday, um, there is, it takes one thing to go wrong and everything goes wrong. So yesterday I was drilling the holes 
for the hood support adjustments that level out the hood. And both sides, I accidentally went through too far. I punched a hole in the top of the carbon fiber on both sides. Luckily enough, I think I'm able to repair it. I'm going to know in a few hours here. Uh, carbon fiber is very finicky that way. It takes nothing to ruin it. So, you know, all the more respect to the guys that absolutely crush it and kill it. Um, that said, uh, yeah, final shaping. I'm going to go around all the edges with the orbital, clean everything up, and make sure everything is where it needs to be. I think first I'm going to go around with a Sharpie and kind of draw it out so I can see it. And then uh, away we go. check it out so this is it um let's have some dust in it obviously not the ideal environment for painting something like this but what are you going to do you got to work with what you have to work with I'm not going to build a paint booth in here not a bad idea um there is some dust in it though but you know what like this is kind of a pro not a prototype hood because i didn't design it um it's just my first stab at making something like this um i just want to say i appreciate you guys watching it though because you know what it was uh it was fun i wanted to see if i did could do this and you know it's not perfect this is far from perfect in fact but it's my first one the next one i mean i learned a lot actually the mold is upside down because i was already fixing stuff on the mold to make the next one better um but yeah let's take a look i'll give you guys a quick montage of it and that's it thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one